the semester. Okay, so what we'll do here is we're learning how to solve equations of factoring. Now this is an equation. Okay, sometimes at this level of class, sometimes don't, students don't know the difference between an expression and an equation. An equation has an equal sign, right? And it means you're finding a specific numerical answer, okay? Most of these problems are going to have two answers because they have a power of two on the variable. So what you do is this is the strategy you do. You want to make sure one side's equal to zero. That's a check. Step two is factor the left side. Now, now that we've learned all the factoring, now the challenge for a student is, do you recognize what kind of factoring problem we have? What's the, what's the deal with 49? That's 7 times 7, right? What's 81? 9 times 9. That's the one that we call a difference of two squares. So you factor this like this. That goes 7k times 7k, 9 times 9 to get 81. And then how do those signs go? Plus minus. Plus minus. Okay, so you got to have that down. If you multiply it out, it's going to check the way it's supposed to. Okay, now what you do is you take each factor and then you set each factor equal to zero. So once you get it factored, then it's pretty easy to finish up. We solve that equation, and then we solve this equation like that. So the whole key is factoring. And then what you do here is you subtract 9 from both sides. That would give 7k equals negative 9. You can usually do this in your head. So that means one answer is going to be uh, negative 9 sevenths. And you just write that in a set builder notation like that. The other one's going to be the same thing, except it's going to be positive. So that's going to give uh, 7k equals 9. Then if you divide by 7, you're going to get 9 sevenths like that. So that's your answer to your problem. That's how you write it. So it's, a, it's all about factoring. And then generally, you're going to get two answers. There are times when you'll get the same answer twice. Okay. Now let's check one answer. Now, like on your last test, remember how I gave you extra credit to check? OK, you'll have that big opportunity on the next one, too. So generally, I would want you to check both answers. But just for the purpose of time, we're going to check one answer. Now, this is important, too. When you check an equation, do not go any place except the beginning. OK, don't, do, don't go to the factoring. Go to the beginning. OK, so what I'm going to do is let's Let's check the negative 9 sevenths. If you can check that, you can check the other one. Okay, it works the same anyway. So we're going to replace k with negative 9. Then we're going to square it. We're going to work that out and see if we get 0. Okay? All right. You want to be able to do this in your head. So what's 9 times 9? 81. What's 7 times 7? 49. When I square this, all I'm doing is I'm just multiplying this fraction by itself, right? So that's 4. Uh, 81 over 49. So I'm going to replace that with 81 minus 49. 81 over 49. All right, what happens to those 49s? They cancel, right? What's 81 minus 81? Zero, so it works. Okay, everything that you do when you solve an equation, you can tell you're right. So you might as well learn how to do that. Okay, what do you think? Okay, any question about that problem? Yes? With the 49 and the 7, couldn't I just cancel out 7 and 49 and you got to square first, though. That's the key. Because there's an order of operations. you got to do an exponent before you multiply. That's why. Okay. All right. Now let's do this next one. One side, zero. That's good. So we're going to do this. This one is a trinomial. Okay. So we've spent a lot of time on trinomials. The first term is x and x, so that's nice. Then you got the 60. So what you have to do, now you don't have to write this down. I just like to do this when I'm teaching this. You got to find two numbers that multiply to give 60 that also add up to uh, 7. So let's see, eventually I will get there. Okay, what is it? 5 and 12. Okay, all right, now you wouldn't, you might not be able to do that super fast like I can, but with practice, you get to a point where you know your multiplication facts quicker. So 5 and 12 are the right choice then that leaves you with just figuring out the sign. So that's a 5x there. That's a 12x there. What are you trying to make that add up to? 7. 7x. Okay, so the way we make 5 and 7 add up to 12 is a plus 12 and a minus 5 like that. So we've learned how to do that. All right, now you still got to get the two answers to the problem. So what you do at this stage, and you can do this in your head. I don't mind if you just are ready to write the answer, because what's the answer to this equation? 
5, right? How about x plus 12 equals 0? What's that answer? Negative 12, okay? You don't have to show that step unless it's necessary to you. So we got 5 and we got negative 12 like that, okay? You're more than welcome to do that in your head. Most of the time you'll be able to do that fine. Okay, so see, most, most of the work on that problem is going through and doing the factoring. Okay, you can check the answer. If you check the answer, where do I want you to go? The beginning. Okay, you need to go to the beginning because if you go to a step, that doesn't prove that you're right because maybe your step's wrong. Okay, if you factored wrong, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay, so that's the idea. All right, does anybody have a question on that? Okay, so the key is factoring, how well you can do your factoring. Okay, now we're going to do a couple more that are a little bit more complicated, but they still revolve around the same idea. So it goes like this. First thing that you always look for is if you have a second power or higher, then you think, okay, I have to factor to solve this equation. What do we want this side to be equal to? Zero. Zero. So what you need to do, you can add 24 to both sides. All right, it's just as easy to just learn to move that thing. So if you move that, you would have 4x to the second minus 20x. We've done this all semester. When you move an object to the other side, the sign changes, so you have that. Okay? Now we've got to figure out how to factor that. So it's all about your factor skill. Uh, look very carefully at those four numbers. What do you notice? They all have a common factor, right? What is it? Four. Okay, so we're going to take a four out of that, and always do with the biggest factor. Or you're making the, you're making it harder. So four times x squared, four times five is going to give twenty, and then four times six is going to give twenty-four like that. Okay, so take that out. Now what? Yeah, that's a trinomial. Good. So you can factor the x squared minus five x plus six. Just bring the 4 down. Don't pay any attention to the 4 anymore. Just bring it down. So now we're going to look kind of at this. The first term is, of course, x and x. Then the last term is 6. Now this problem right here, oftentimes the student looks like it has two possibilities, but it really doesn't. You could do 6 and 1, or you could do 3 and 2. The only one that you're going to get the negative 5 out correctly is going to be this one. Okay. Because if you did a 6 and 1, it would mess up that last term. So I'm going to put a 3 and 2 there, and then it's going to be two minus signs like that, right? Okay, yes? I'm sorry, why will the 6 and 1 work? Okay, I'll show you. Okay, that's a good question. So, yeah, you see this sometimes. So what happens is, okay, you would see that as 6x, you would say that is 1x, and you want it to add up to that, right? Okay, so you might think that that's the answer. But it isn't. You know why? Look at this. If you FOIL this, what's the last term? Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. That doesn't match. You see what I mean? You, if, if these things factor, there's only one way to factor it. So although it looks like you might get it to work, you won't. Okay, does that help you? Okay. Does everybody see that okay? You have to be careful. Okay. Now, what you do with this now is you just take each factor and set it equal to zero. And again, you can solve this, these two equations in your head. The four doesn't matter. You're not going to go four equals zero. That's kind of, that wouldn't make any sense, would it? I mean, you know four is not the same as zero, so don't even bother. Okay, that's just a number. So what are the two answers now? Three and two. Good. Okay. I don't care what order you put it in the set notational system, so you just do that. Okay, let's, uh, let's check one answer. Just uh, kind of do that a little bit here and there. Let's check the 2. And again, if you were checking the 2, you want to write down the checking so you know how to do that. You would just do 4 times 2 to the second minus 20 times 2. And then you would verify and see if that's equal to negative 24. Okay, again, I'm going to the original. Okay, you got to do order of operations. So that would be 4 times 4. 2 to the second is 4. 20 times 2 is 40, so that is, whoops, 16 minus 40. If you take your calculator, what do you get? Negative 24. So it's right. So that doesn't take any time at all. Okay, and then you could check the 3 the same way. All right, everybody solid okay with that one? 
Okay. Now, one thing that's real important is don't forget about common factors. What students do all the time on a problem like this is they immediately go to two parentheses. You can get it to factor, but it's harder. So once you take that four out, you're making the you're making it an easier problem to work with. See. Okay. Okay. Now let's do this uh, last one here. Then we get into some problems that are a little bit more advanced. Okay. So we're going to look at 90 n to the second plus 90 n equals zero. It's all about factoring. First of all, we, we want to make sure that side's equal to zero. So that's good, right? Now, look very carefully at the 90, at those two terms. Is there a common factor? Yes. What's the common factor? 90 and n, right? Okay. Remember, if you have that, we've worked on this a lot. If you have an, a letter in both places, the one, whichever one has the lowest exponent is the one that gets to come out. Okay. So we put a 90 in there. Then we have a set of parentheses there. Okay. Now you want to try to just reason this out in your head. It's not that hard to do in your head. What do you multiply 90 in by so it gives you the first term? Just an n, right? n times n is n squared. So I see students mess up on this all the time. So what do you multiply 90 in by to get itself? One. You know what I see students do all the time? They leave a blank there. There's got to be something there, right? Okay, so that has to be a 1, so it goes like that. All right, so now we're factored. Now what we always do when we factor now is we take each factor and set each factor to 0. And then don't get confused on this. See in that problem above, the 4, I didn't do anything with the 4. But I am going to take the time to do the 90 in equals 0 because it has a variable in it. Okay, see the reason I didn't do anything with the 4 is because it doesn't have a variable. Okay, so we can solve that equation, and then we can solve this equation like that. Okay, what are the two answers in your head? Negative 1, what's the other one? 0. Okay, all right, because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide both sides by 90. That'll give n equals 0. And then this one, you don't have to show that step because you're welcome to do that in your head. So you get a 0 and a negative 1 as the two answers of that problem. Okay, now... A lot of times students don't think about their answer, and this is something you want to do. Look how easy it is to tell that zero is an answer. All of you can do this. If you replaced both of those in with zero, wouldn't you get a zero? Yeah, because zero times 90 is zero, and then zero squared is zero, and zero times 90 is zero, see? Okay, you can tell zero's got to be an answer. You see what I mean? Okay, so you have that ability to, to determine if you're correct. Okay, so let's move on, and we're going to now do some problems that are a little more advanced. So if you can do these last problems in this section, everything else will be easier for you. So we're going to work with this number 19. Now this one is, it looks to students like it's factored. Well, it is factored, but the thing is, this side is not equal to zero. What I see students do all the time, and this is wrong, by the way, is a lot of times I see students say, well, that's going to give me 0, that's going to give me 5. If I set that equal to 0, I get 7 thirds, and so forth. The problem is it does not work that way. It's, it's, the thing is, you have to have one side equal 0, and then you have to have factors on the left side. Okay. So what we have to do in this problem is we have to multiply everything out, then get everything on one side, collect like terms, and then finally factor. So this problem is going to have a bunch of steps to it. You can't just set the factors equal to zero because that side right there is not zero. Does that make sense? I see students, I give that on a test and that's what students do. They don't do anything, they just do, do the answer. Totally wrong, totally wrong. I see that all the time. Okay, so what we're gonna do on this one is on the left side, I'm just gonna write down the, the problem so I can take up a little bit more room when I'm doing this. So we're going to multiply everything out. And we have to do that before we get one side equals zero. Okay, you have to. So we're going to do a distributive property here. So 4x times x is 4x to the second. And then 4x times 5 is negative 20x. Multiply it out. Okay. What do you do on the right side? That's foil. Okay, so you want to do the foil. Okay. So we want to do 3x times x is 3x to the second. Outside term, 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. Inside term, negative 7 times x is negative 7x. 
and then negative 7 times 5 is positive 35. Be very, very careful with every sign that you do. Don't make any mistakes on arithmetic. Okay, everybody with me so far? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do on this is, right now you can just move everything to the left side if you want to. Okay, you could also put those like terms together. I'm just going to have you do this, because you can do this in your head. Since I want one side to be equal to zero, just move all of these terms over to the left side. And what that's going to do is it's going to change the signs. So if you do it this way, don't forget to do that. So the 3x squared is going to change to minus. The minus 15 goes to plus and so forth. Okay, plus 35 goes to minus. Then that whole side's equal to zero. That's the simplest way to learn how to do that is just move everything over and change the signs. Okay, now you're obviously not ready to factor because what you're going to do is you want to put together anything that has a like term is going to go together. So 4 minus 3 is just going to be 1x to the second. So that gives that. Okay, then these all go together. The 20, the 15, and the 7. You can always use your calculator if you need to. So I think that's minus 2. Negative 20 plus 5 is um, negative 5. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2. So that was going to be plus 2x. I always scratch things out, so that's how I keep track of everything. Then I bring down the minus 35, okay, like that. All right, do you guys see what I'm doing? Okay, now, what do you do now? You factor. Now it looks like the problems we just got through doing, right? So see, you have to multiply everything out before you can factor, okay? Now you're ready to do that. You got one side equals zero, so now what we're going to do is focus on factoring the left side then, okay? All right, so the fir first term on this is going to be, that's easy, that's just x and x. Last term is 35. Middle term is 2. So what's the magic combination for 35 on this problem? 7 times 5, right? 7 times 5 is 35, but you also want 7 and 5 to add up to 2, and you can do that, right? Okay, so that's a 7x. That's a 5x. What has to be what? What's negative and what's positive? Like that, right? 7 minus 5 is 2, so that means you're going to have a plus there, and you're going to have a minus there. Okay? Don't mess up on the factoring. Always make sure that you factored everything right. Now you can tell me the two answers. Can you tell me the two answers to this problem now? Negative 7. What else? And 5. Because what you're doing is you're setting each factor to zero and you're solving those little simple equations like that, which you're welcome to do in your head. So there's negative seven, and over here is five. Okay, yes? I can't make 4x squared and then negative five. Uh, where are you in the problem? No, I'm, I, I get it all. I'm just wondering if you can move 4x squared and negative 20x to the other side instead of 3x squared. Because it's like negative four x squared. When I put together like terms, I'm a little confused. I apologize. It's like the step before that yeah. where you move all the stuff on the right over. Couldn't you theoretically move the stuff on the left side? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It doesn't matter. The reason, I'll tell you the reason I do this, and this is actually a good thing to catch on to, is I always move everything on the side that has the biggest x squared. Because if I moved it that way, 3 minus 4 would be negative x squared. And usually you don't want a negative number in front of a squared term because the factoring's a tad bit harder. So that's that's my thought process is move everything to the left because the 4 is bigger than the 3. You see what I mean? That's a good thing to catch on to. Okay, so that means the answer to this problem is negative 7, 5. If you can do that problem, then you've got a lot of skill that you're developing because you got FOIL, you got factoring, rearranging terms. That's quite, kind of what we're after in this section is to get you to do these problems at this level. And, and even harder than these. Okay, let's look at the next one. All right, and then I'll let you do a, a few problems to see how skilled you are with all this stuff now. Okay, this one you do have to multiply out. Okay, now, watch this extremely carefully. I want to make sure that everybody knows how to do this correctly. I see this wrong from students, even if I'm teaching Calculus 2 or something. I still see students do this wrong. What students do a lot of times is they say, well, I just square the x, I square the 7, and I get 49. Problem done. No way. 
absolutely no way. It doesn't work. Now, I want to show you something, and just pay attention to this. Like if you had 2 plus 3 to the second, in your head, what's the answer to that problem? 5 to the second, right? 2 plus 3 is 5, so what's 5 to the second? 25, right? Okay, let's see if this works. If I just did 2 to the second and 3 to the second, I'd get 4 plus 9. That isn't 25. It does not work. Okay, what you have to do instead is you have to write it out twice, then multiply it. And you've got to make sure you pay attention to that. You don't want to make that mistake. So what I'm going to have you do as your first step is let's just write that out twice, bring down the x squared, not like that, write it like that. Okay, then on this right side, write out the x plus 1 twice like that. You must do it that way, okay? Because if you get x squared plus 49, you're missing a middle term that you're going to get out of that when you foil that, see? Okay? So we want to get everything written out. Now what you want to focus on is multiplying this out. Okay, do the foil. You can do the foil in your head. x times x is x the second. Outside term, you have a negative 7 times x, negative 7x, get the sign right. Middle term, negative 7 times x is the same thing. And then the last term, negative 7 times negative 7, is plus 49. Okay? Now, see, we have the x squared and 49, but you're also going to have a negative 14x, right? Okay? Now you can bring down that x squared. That's still there, so bring it down. Okay? And then we're going to do the same thing on the right side. We're going to multiply this out by FOIL. So the first term is x times x is x to the second. Outside term is plus 1x. Inside term is plus 1x. And then the last term, 1 times 1 is 1 like that. Okay, everybody okay with that? Okay. And you can do stuff in your head if you want to. So what I'm going to go ahead and do on this is I'm going to collect like terms. So what I'm doing is just working with the left side. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Put them together. 1 plus 1 is 2. These go together. Negative 7 minus 7 is negative 14x. Then I got the plus 49 like that. Okay? If you have like terms, put them together. Okay? Now if we go to the right side, I have an x squared. These two terms go together. So that will be 1 plus 1 or 2x plus 1. So after I multiply, then I want to go through and put together. Now you could have, instead of doing that, went ahead and moved everything the other, the other side too. Still works. Okay? To me, a better strategy is multiply, collect, then start moving everything. Okay, everybody with me okay? Okay. Now, do this. Okay, just write down the left side as it is. This is the way I prefer students to learn to write their step. Now, just move everything and be sure you change your sign. That's a common mistake. So that's minus x squared, minus 2x, minus 1, and then the right side is 0. That's what we have to have is that right side equals 0. Okay. Now you're going to put together all of your like terms. So you're going to have these go together. So you want to put those together. You want to put together anything that has an x in it. Then you want to put the just the numbers together like that. You can do that in your head. So 2 minus 1 is x to the second. Negative 14 minus 2 is like two debts. That's negative 16. And then 49 minus 1 is positive 48 like that. Okay? Now, if you make any arithmetic mistakes, the problem is you would probably end up with something that doesn't factor. Everything at this stage in the class has got a factor at the very end. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the factoring aspect of this. Okay, like that. So now we're, gonna, we're ready to draw our two parentheses and see if this factors. So, of course, we'll have x and x. Okay, the 48, might, that number may not come to you immediately. Sometimes you have to think about it. I'm going to do this super fast. 1 and 48, 2 and 24, uh, 3 and 16, 4 and 12. What do you think? 4 and 12. I stopped because I found it, see. Okay, 4 and 12 add up to 16, right? So do that if you have to. I mean, because it's not going to always come to you immediately until you get some experience and practice. Okay, so... How do the signs go? 
on this one. Negative, negative, is that what I'm hearing? Okay, okay, so they both got to be negative. So that means you would have the factoring like that. Now, what are the two answers to this problem? Four and 12, okay, all right, that's it, okay? So once you get down to that stage there, 4 minus 4 is 0, 12 minus 12 is 0, so the answers are 4 and 12. See, if you can do that problem effectively, then to me, you're starting to gain some good algebra skill because you're proving you can FOIL, distribute, collect like terms, and factor and solve very simple equations. That's kind of putting it all together, okay? All right, so I'm going to let you work on just the next two, and I'll give you a little bit of time to do these because they do take a little bit of time to do. Okay, I'll pause real quick, and, um, and then you can see on this, because just keep working on it for a few minutes, because I want people, if you didn't get this, just to see where your mistake was, so I'm going to do this super fast, I'm not going to explain it, but just want you to, to check over everything real quick. All right, now um, the first one, I think I helped enough people with mistakes that I think maybe everybody got to that point. Did everybody make it to negative, to get the answer, negative nine and two? Yeah. Okay, there's just little mistakes that I saw some of you make. So the idea is, uh, is, is this, I'll let you, we'll spend a little bit more time on the second one. So yeah, you get negative nine and then you get two like that. The key to this problem is getting that on your paper, okay? Now, what a lot of you did is you forgot to take the four out. So you want to take the four out first, then factor the trinomial like that. It's easier that way. All right, does anybody have any questions about that problem? Okay, I thought you guys did very well. I'm always happy to see students do these problems well because it means you can do a lot of things now, okay? Now, let's look carefully at the next one on here. And a couple of things, if you don't end up getting my answer, you want to just look and see kind of where you went wrong, okay? The answer that you should get on this when you're going to make it all the way down to here, if you do everything correct, you'll make it to there. If you got that on your paper, then congratulate yourself because you made no arithmetic mistakes, nothing, okay? Now, when you factor that, you get this, so the two answers are what? Two and three, okay? Now, if you did not get that, what you need to look, I'll give you a, a minute here to kind of look over this, is make sure that you did your FOIL correct. That's the first thing you got to check is make sure everything on the FOILing is correct. Then I collected like terms. I just put together the X's. Then I moved everything to the left side. Be sure some of you are kind of slipping up on this. When you move stuff, be sure you change the signs. And you can use your calculator. These are big numbers, so use your calculator for accuracy. So if you do everything correctly, you should get down to that point. And then that's got to be x minus 2, x minus 3 is how that factors. Okay? All right. Um, okay, so a little bit different situation. All right. Number 23, 
first of all, what you have is you have one side equals zero. That's what you want, right? This thing is in a factored form already. That's what you want. Do not multiply that out. That would defeat the whole purpose of the problem. So since it's already factored, what are you going to do? You're going to just take each factor, including the x, and you're going to set each factor equal to zero. So you want, if, if one side's equal to zero and you're factored, then you don't have to do anything other than this. Okay, don't confuse that with the problems you just did. You had to multiply out the problems you just did before you could get a side equal zero. That's the difference. Okay, so what you would have is that would be an answer right there. Okay, here you can do this. You just subtract 4 from each side. You get 8x equals negative 4. Divide by 8. Is negative 4 over 8 a good answer for my math lab? No, you got to reduce the fraction, right? So that re re reduces down to negative 1 half. You're just dividing by 4 to re 4 over 8 is a half. Okay, then the next one you can do in your head or add 1 to both sides. You're going to get x equals 1. So your answers I'm going to write as negative 1 half, comma 0, comma 1, like that. Okay? Now that one is already factored, so you have three answers because you have three distinct factors. Zero there, negative one half there, one there. Yes? How do you know it's factored out? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, because it's written as a multiplication problem, right? Okay, factor, if something's factored, you just have parentheses next to each other, right? Represented by multiplication. Everything is being multiplied. That looks like the answer to a factoring problem, right? Right? Versus this, okay? Like if you look at this right here, this is that is not factored, right? That's just a adding and subtracting things. This is factored. If you have two sets of parentheses at a minimum, then it's then it's factored. Okay? Does that make sense? But there's problems that are outside like two sets of anyway. Yeah, like this problem right here, we had to multiply the, by out first. The reason we did is because we had to get one side equal zero. And before you got one side equal zero on problem 22, you had to multiply out in order to accomplish that. Okay? Then you had to factor it. The difference in this problem is notice that this side's already equal to zero. That's what you want, right? And it's already factored. See, that's the way you want these problems to look. Before you get the final answer, you're looking for something factored equals zero. We already have that. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Now the next one. Okay. Now don't write this down, but here's what I see students do all the time on this problem. Okay. They'll go, okay, 3 elevenths x and x. I got to find numbers that multiply to give 35 over 22 and add up to 31 over 22. That's ridiculous. Okay, what can you do? You have a bunch of fractions and it's an equation. What do you do? I've taught you this. You get rid of the fractions, right? Okay, get rid of the fractions. Do not make your, uh, your work uh, difficult. Okay, keep it simple. So here's the idea. If you look at 11 and 22, basically 11 already goes into 22, right? It goes in two times. So the common denominator is 22, all right? So what we're going to do on this is I'm going to go ahead. Let's just start by writing the problem down. And what we're going to do, we've done this before. If you're trying to get rid of a fraction, you want to multiply by that common denominator. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we are going to multiply both sides of this equation by 22. And by doing that, we'll end up having an equation that does not have any fractions in it. Okay? Now, you can do this in your head if you, if you practice this a little bit. As I'm teaching this, I'm going to carefully write down what I have. I have 22, and I'm going to put that over 1, times... 3x squared over 11. I'm just going to write it down, then I'll show you how you deal with that. Then we're going to do this. We're doing a distributive property. So it's minus 22 over 1 times 31x over 22. Okay. Then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do plus 22 over 1 
times 35 over 22 there, and then that side is still zero. Okay, yes? Those don't just cancel the cancel. Yes, exactly. And that's the reason I did that. I think what you're thinking is the 22 and 11 are going to cancel, right? Okay, the 22s are going to cancel. Maybe that's what you're thinking. Yeah, that's the reason I did that. Okay, so is everybody with me what I'm, what I'm doing on this? No. No? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. Well, I'm not done. I'm ready to start canceling now. So 22 over 11 is two, right? right. And then you'll do two times three is six. Gotcha. Okay, that's the idea. Right now, I'm just kind of getting it set up on my paper when I start canceling now. So, okay, you got that. You got this. What you got to do is you're gonna cancel out those fractions. Okay. So, the 22s cross out there, and then this 22 over 11 is two, right? Okay. What's the result of this box right here after you cancel? Six. Two times three is six. So that's going to give you a 6x to the second. This is going to be minus 31x. And then that's going to be plus 35 equals zero. Okay, you would much rather factor that. It doesn't have any fractions in it. All right, is everybody okay with that? Okay. This is a trial and error type of, tri of trinomial. So we need to work a little bit with trial and error. Okay, so what I'm going to do on this is the first term is 6x squared, so I'm going to try 2x and 3x. The other thing I could try is 1x and 6x. For a 35, I'm going to try 5 and 7. And it may, it may have to adjust the order we do that in. So let's put a 5 there and pull it a 7 there, and maybe we're lucky. I don't know. Okay, let's see. That's a 15x. This is a 14x. What do I want to accomplish with 15 and 14? Is that going to work? No. So what do I do? I switch the 5 and 7. Don't forget to do that. If it doesn't work one way, the 5 and 7 may work the other way. So that does not work. So I'm going to erase that. And now we're going to do that backwards and see if it works. I have a feeling it'll probably work because it was only off by 2 there. So let's go 7 there, and let's go 5 there. Now we have 21x there, and then we have 10x. What do you think of that? I like it. How do the signs go? Minus, minus. Okay, if you're going to get 21 and 10 to add up to negative 31, they both have to be negative, right? So what you're going to have is that would be your factoring. That's how that goes. Okay, now you're ready to finish up the problem. Okay, everybody okay with the factoring? See, draw that visual until you get to a point where you can process it better in your head. So now what we're going to do to finish up the problem is we just do, and I'll just move this over here, 2x minus 7 is 0. If you can do that in your head, I'm fine with that. Okay, so I'm just going to add 7, or you can even move the 7 and just write that as 2x equals 7, then divide by 2. So that means one of your answers is 7 over 2. Okay, over here, add 5 to both sides. Then divide by 3, so the other answer to that problem is 5 over 3. Okay, So the key thing on that one is, if you have an equation that has fractions, get rid of the fractions. Okay, Don't do it any other way, because it's too hard to do it any other way. All right, That's the idea. All right, you guys follow that okay? Okay, All right. I can tell you guys are getting pretty good with your factoring. That's, that's encouraging. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, now let's do this um, next, these next two here, and I'll show you kind of what I got going on on this one. Okay, any time that you have exponents in your equation, your thought process is one side equals zero and factor. That's it. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to have you move the 18x to the left side. So let's write down what we have. x to the third plus 3x to the second, and then minus 18x equals zero. Be very cautious when you do that. Change that sign. Okay. Now, let's start thinking factoring. How do you factor something like that? You take an x out. Good. You have a third power, second power, first power, the one with the smallest exponent comes out. So you want to go ahead and take that x out. Just kind of backwards multiply in your head. So you'd have x times x squared. x times 3x is going to give you 3x squared. And then x times 18 it's going to have, give you 18x. See, all the powers went down one because I took an x to the first out. Now what? 
Yeah, factor the trinomial, okay? So what I'm going to have from here now is I'm going to have x times. Now I'm going to draw two parentheses, and I'm going to focus on this. The first term is x, so I do x and x. The last term's 8. What do you want, what do you want me to use for 18? 6 and 3. Six and three. Good. Okay, so we're going to have 6 times 3 is 18. We want it to add up to plus 3, so that means plus 6 minus 3 like that. Okay? Now, you got three answers. Okay, so the answers go like this. You set that equal to 0, and that is an answer. Then you set x plus 6 equals 0, and what's that answer? x equals negative 6. Good. Then you do this one. You do x minus 3 is equal to 0, so what's that answer? That's 3. It's got three answers, so I'm going to write this as negative 6, 0, and 3. Again, I don't care what order you put your answer in. I just put them in. I order them in numerical order like that. Now, one thing when you're doing your homework, and this is important, if your highest power is 3, you're guaranteed to get three answers. If your highest power is 4, you're going to get four answers. If your highest power is a million, you're going to get a million answers. Now, you're not going to see that. You're not going to see anything higher than a third power. That's something you usually learn in college algebra, although it is possible that the answers could repeat themselves. You could get the, answer, the three answers, but they could all be the same. Okay, does that make sense? That's a good thing to catch on to because at the beginning of a problem, you're thinking already, I'll probably, I'm going to get three answers say. Okay? All right, any questions on that? Okay, let's do this one and then we'll take a, a little break here. Okay, this one, one side has to be set equal to zero. Now, before you get one side equal zero, you have to multiply out, okay? Because ultimately, you got to have one side equal zero and then factor it. So let's multiply that out, and I'm just going to bring down the left side as it is. Okay, like this. And then the right side, 2x times x is 2x to the second, and then minus 10x like that. You have to multiply out so that you can get one side equals zero. That's the idea. Now, what I'm going to do is let's move everything to the left side of the equation. Now let's see kind of what happens. All right, so I'm going to move the 2x squared to the left, changing that sign to minus 2x squared. Let's move the negative 10 so we get that. Okay, I multiply out, then I move all the terms. Okay, we okay? What do you see happening on this? A lot of things cancel, right? Oh, it was kind of weird. That cancels. Okay, that cancels. What are you left with? 3 equals 0. What in the world? What does that mean? Does it mean anything to you? It means there's no solution to this equation. That's a contradiction. Well, you know that 3 is not equal to 0. Anytime the variables cancel, we've seen that before, that's no solution. Okay? Now, let me just ask you this. What if you did an equation and you ended up with 5 equals 5? Then it's not solution. It's not no solution. What is it? It's all real numbers. Everything. Everything. The opposite of nothing is everything, right? Okay. So that answer on that one would just be no solution. So you kind of like it when that happens. Everything cancels out. You don't have to worry about factoring. The idea is you saw, once you see that statement, you know it's no solution. Okay. Is that good? Okay. Let's, uh, let's, take, uh, let's come back at 10 after. It gives you a little over 10 minutes. This up. Uh, on this 27, this is a word problem, so we're going to set up an equation, okay? So the key thing when you set up equations is try to read the sentence, of course, first of all, and find your equal sign. Your equal sign is right there. If something is, it's equal to. And on the right side of that is 90. Something's equal to 90, okay? Now you sort of put this together. What does the word sum tell you to do? It tells you to add two things together. The two things you are adding together are a number and the square of that number. Well, the number's unknown, right? So that's going to be x, so we put that there. How do you write the square of x? x squared. That's what the problem says. So what that's saying is if you sum a number, x, and its square, x squared, you're going to get 90. Does that make sense? Okay, just doing exactly what that sentence is directing me to do. 
Now, this is what we've been working on today. One side has to be set equal to zero. So you're going to move the 90 to the other side. And I'm going to write this like this, x squared plus x minus 90 equals zero. Now it's the same step. Now you've got the skill to finish this up. So let's go ahead and factor this one. So you'd have x and x. What are you going to use for the 90 probably? 9 and 10, because you do want 9 and 10 also to add up to 1. So we're going to have a 9 there, and we're going to have a 10 there. And then again, we want to have, if we're getting a 1x, we want to have a plus 10 and a minus 9. So that's the factoring. What are the two answers of this problem then? 9 and negative 10, okay? So 9 is an answer, and negative 10 is an answer. So you do get two answers, okay? Now, if you're really going to learn word problems good, or if you're going to learn math good, you've got to learn how to understand and check and verify that you're right. So let's do this. Really, all this problem means is this. Let's start with 9. What the problem said to do is to take 9 and add it to the square of 9. Okay, what's 9 to the second? 81. What's 9 plus 81? 90. That's what it was supposed to be. Okay, that's right. Okay, see, I'm not plugging into the equation. I'm just doing what the problem tells me to do. Let's look at negative 10. What the problem said to do is to take negative 10, take the square of negative 10, and sum them up. Let's see what we get. That's negative 10. What's negative 10 to the second? 100. What's negative 10 plus 100? 90. So both answers work. Okay, so that's what that problem really means is... There's two possibilities that, that make that work. Those are the only two possibilities. Of it. Okay, nothing else will work. Okay, does that make any sense? Okay, partially what we're trying to do with this, for higher math, you have to learn how to read sentences and translate it into mathematical symbols. That's the exercise that that's doing. Okay, now let's look at this one. Students usually seem like they remember this real well. Uh, so let's see. So we have a rectangular floor. Just draw yourself a rectangle. And what it says is it says it measures, uh, let's see, 15 by 8. Okay, like this. So let's do the longer one as 15 feet. And let's do the shorter one as um, 8 feet like that. So what we're supposed to do is find the diagonal of the floor. Well, a diagonal, what does that mean? It just means cut it across like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is you just kind of cut that that way. And you get a right triangle, okay? I don't think we've done this this semester, but you, you've probably done this in your past at some point. Anytime that you have a right triangle, and if you're going to take trigonometry in a few semesters, you do, the, you do this theorem all the time, you probably remember A, B, and C. How do they relate? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I think that's what you asked me over there a minute ago, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. So that's the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to call that, any, that any, anything, but C is typical. This thing right here, that's called the hypotenuse, if you don't remember that. That's the longest side of the right triangle. And then these two things, A and B, we call those the legs. So anytime that you have a right triangle, uh, what you do is you do the sum of the squares of the legs, and that's equal to the hypotenuse. That's the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Right? You know there was a U.S. president who proved, who came up with a unique proof of the Pythagorean theorem. You have any idea who that was? It wasn't Donald Trump. It wasn't Obama. It wasn't any of the Bushes. It was James Garfield a long time ago. Okay, he actually came up with his own proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Since then, the president's been going downhill. They don't do math anymore. Okay, so. What we do with this is, we're going to set this up. So what we do is we just do 8 squared plus 15 squared is equal to C squared like that. Okay, see that's the hypotenuse, so that's the C, so it's by itself. Okay, if we work this out, then 8 squared is 64. 15 times 15 is 225. You can use your calculator if you need to. So then we get this. Now if we add these two numbers together, I think you're going to get 289 equals C squared. Now, that is not what C is. There's no way that side of that diagonal is 289. What do you got to do? Good, square root. Okay, so you square root that, and then you can take your calculator if you don't know that. I think this one comes out okay. I think it, that's, I can't even remember what that is. Square root of 289 is uh, 17. Yeah. 
Okay, so the answer to that problem would be 17 feet. If the answer turns out to be a decimal, just round it. So sometimes you'll do the square root and it'll have decimals, just round it. Okay, like that. Okay, does that look like something you've done in your past? Okay, that's good. That's helpful. If you're going to take trig, the Pythagorean theorem is a real big deal. It shows up all the time. Okay, let's look at uh, 29. And this is just sort of getting you comfortable a little bit with the business ideas. And actually, if a student studies business or, or uh, economics and finance, there's tons of math in economics. Ex economics majors have to do calculus and stuff like that. So what this is, is this is a cost function. That just represents the cost. And then X is just representing uh, how many items you're selling. Okay, You're selling X, X units of something. So what they're telling you in this problem is that cost is equal to $3,300. So you're trying to figure out how many units are sold in order to get this cost equal to 3300 So really all it is is it's an application of a factorable equation. So we started off like this, and then we're going to solve this. Now, we've been working on this same kind of equation today. We just haven't worked with real big numbers yet. That's the only thing you're going to get into this. All right, what do you do first? One side equals zero, right? Okay, you must do that. This time I'm going to move it over there. Okay, so I'm going to have a zero on the left side, which is fine. Then we'd have x squared minus 40x plus 2100 minus 3300. So that's zero equals x squared minus 40x, and I believe that's um, 1200. Okay, like that. Okay, got big numbers, but we're still going to solve this by factoring. So the way I'm going to look at this is let's just pretend like it's, let's drop off one of the zeros. Okay, let's just kind of, or, or really just kind of look at it like that. Just to, just to start with, let's think about that. So what are two numbers that would multiply to give 12 that would somehow add up to a 4? Don't worry about the negative right now. 6 and 2, right? Okay, so like if you have 6 times 2, and then you can make 6 and 2 add up to 4, if that one's negative. Okay, so that would be kind of the combination. So when you have bigger numbers with zeros at the end, then you can just kind of look at it that way. But we have to kind of reason it out. So what we're going to have is x and x. Now let's work with 6 and 2, but let's try how about 60 and 20. How about that? Now 60 times 20 is 1,200. Now all we got to do is we got to figure out how do we get this term to add up? So that's 60x there. That's 20x there. So you make it add up to negative 40 by having a negative there and a plus there. Okay, it's the same idea we've been doing on factor and trinomials. But yeah, you got bigger numbers. Okay, and sometimes you have to work with that a little bit. So does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to get our two answers. So we have x minus 60, x plus 20 equals 0. So what are the two answers? 60 units and x equals negative 20 units. Remember, we're doing an application here, OK? One of those answers is stupid. Which one? OK, the negative one, right? OK, I shouldn't say stupid, OK? That one doesn't make any sense, right? So throw it out, okay? In the context of this problem, that doesn't make any sense. So that means the answer to the problem is going to be 60 units, okay? All that's, the purpose of that problem is to get you just comfortable with seeing like a business function or something like that, okay? Same idea, and then the factoring with the numbers a little bit bigger. I know in your homework, there's one problem where the factoring is real, real difficult because you'll have big numbers. You have to work on it a little bit, okay? Okay, so that'll wrap that up.